This is the Ayers Rock from Haima. At Road Surfer, it is called the Roadhouse. Now, I will show you what it looks like from the inside. To comfortably get in the vehicle, you will have an electric step. Press and hold this switch to extend the electric step. Now you can comfortably get in the vehicle. Do not forget to close the electric step when you continue your journey. If you hear a loud beeping sound when you want to start driving, then the electric step is still extended. Just close it here. In your roadhouse, you will have your dining area here, a kitchen, a bedroom downstairs, a rooftop bed, and a luxury bathroom. Here you will have a shower, sink, and a toilet. This is your kitchen. Here you have a fridge, a stove top with two gas hobs, and a sink with flowing water, as well as lots of storage. But first, I will show you the fridge in more detail. You can open it from both sides. Once from in here, when you are in the bus, but also from the outside. When you are outside, you can grab a cold from here. There is lots of storage and even an ice box up here for groceries or to make ice cubes. Now I will show you how to turn on the fridge. You can do it via this button. Click on it once and hold it until the fridge turns on. This is the symbol and the sound that the fridge makes. And here you will see the cooling level. If you click on it twice, then you can choose the desired level by turning the wheel. Three is the average setting, and if you click on it once more, then you can confirm the cooling level. Now the fridge is working. If you want to turn the fridge off again, then click on the small wheel with your finger and hold it until the fridge is turned off. If you want to expand the working surface in the kitchen, you can find the extension in the drawer over here. You can hang it on this rail right here for more room. To start cooking, you will need to open the big gas bottle in the back of the vehicle. In a moment, I will show you where to find the gas bottle and how to open it. After opening the gas bottle in the back, you can flip this switch. When the cooking pot is the right way around, then the gas will flow to the stove and you can turn on the stovetop. To do this, press this small wheel downwards and turn it to the side and press this black button. Then the gas hob will turn on. You can do the same for the other burners. Please make sure that you have at least one window open while cooking, or even better, the door. Then the steam can leave the vehicle. Do not forget to turn off the gas after cooking and close the gas bottle again. When it is dark, you can turn on a light outside. With this switch in the vehicle, you can turn the lights on and off on the outside of the vehicle. In addition, you have a big fly screen so that insects do not go flying around in the vehicle. The best way to do this is to push with both hands. Hold it here in the middle until it is closed. Remember that you can overlook the fly screen when it is dark outside, so please make sure that you do not accidentally walk into it. Always think, is our fly screen opened or closed? And then push it back to the side. In the interior, you will have a lot of additional storage space, up here in this big compartment. Here you will have your first aid kit and your warning triangle. It will always be stored up here. Then you will also have some storage space over here to store some small things. And this will be your dining area. Here you have a window which you can open by flipping this lever and pushing the window to the side. You can use a fly screen here and even attach a blackout to the window. If the parking heater does not turn on, then it could be that one of the windows is still opened. There is an automatic lock because of the ventilation for the parking heater is right here, so that it does not flow into the vehicle. It is important to close all the windows when using the parking heater, so if it does not work, 
close the windows. You also have a table here. To unfold the table, release the strap here, and then you can pull the table upwards. It will then snap into place. To unfold the extension, pull the support forward first so that the table does not fold away. Then you can unfold it. Here you have a 12 volt socket that only works when the vehicle is connected to an external power source. Underneath it, you will find a 230 volt socket. This one also only works when the vehicle is connected to external power. You can fold in the table by flipping this board here. The support should be pushed back in and then pull the table upwards a tiny bit. Push the bracket on the rod forwards a bit and then you can fold the table back towards the wall and secure it. Here on the floor you will find two compartments. In one of them you will see the electronics for the vehicle. You will not need to go near there. And here you will have a sweeping brush which you will need on occasion. Here you can eat something or play games. If you want even more space, you can turn the front two seats around. I will now show you how that works. To do this, pull the seat all the way forward via this black rod and push it upwards and finally pull the seat forward. Then make sure that the backrest is in a vertical position and then you will find a black switch here. Push this one to the side and then you can turn the seats. Now you can comfortably sit four at the table. You are also able to black out the windows. To black out the front windows, click the shades in here with two fingers. You can then pull the shades forward very slowly and hook it in easily here. It works the same way for the windshield in the front. Click it in with two fingers here and then the shades will release and then push it forward. You need to do this from both sides. In the middle, it connects magnetically. Here you have a light switch for the interior of the vehicle. You will find another 230 volt socket here, which there are also more of. For example, one over here, one over the sink, and one back here in the bedroom. They only work when the vehicle is connected to an external power source. In addition, you will find some 12 volt sockets here and some USB connections back here in the bedroom. They work even when the vehicle is not connected to external power. So that the electric works in the vehicle, you will need to turn on the onboard computer. Just click down here. When the green light is on, then the onboard computer is on and you can turn the light on and off here, for example. You can also see the fill levels. Down here you will have the starter battery with a display. Here you will see a water tank. It is currently empty, which is why nothing is happening right now. This is the fresh water tank. It is also almost empty. Up here you will see the second battery. Here you can see how full it still is. On the display, you can also see that the doors are still open. Even when all the doors are closed, it can still be the case that the roof is not closed correctly. This is your bathroom with shower, sink and toilet. To unfold the sink, push the tap to the side and then you will see a push button. Push it down and then pull out the sink. You even have a daylight bathroom. You can open the window by pushing the lever to the side and then pushing outward to open it. Behind this mirror, you will find some storage space. If you click on it once, then you can push it to the side and you will have space for your toothpaste, shower gel and other things. You can use the water tap for the sink and even for the outdoor shower if you want to clean the sand off of your feet. The water tap also functions as a shower head and I will now show you how to use it.
You will need this suction cup to attach the shower head, and you also have your shower curtain here. Just pull it to the side and click it in here to attach it. Then you will see this hole. You can pull the shower head through here and then attach the suction cup. It is best to attach up here on the mirror. Then you can hang in the shower head and take a shower. You can remove the shower head and suction cup and set it to the side. Please let the shower curtain dry after taking a shower so that it does not get moldy. Up here, there is a bar where you can hang your towels. And this is the toilet. You can adjust it to make it more comfortable for you to sit on. You can turn the toilet. To go to the bathroom, you must open the lid up and then you will see a cap on the side. You will need to open this by pushing the lever to the side. Then the cap will open and you can use the toilet. You can flush the toilet by pressing on this blue button. When everything has flushed, then push the grey lever back to the side so that the cap is closed again. When the toilet cassette is full, then the light will turn red and then you will need to empty it out. I will show you later how to do this. So that you have flowing water in the bathroom and in the kitchen, you need to turn on the water pump. You simply must click on the pump once. Then an orange light will appear when the fresh water tank is filled up and now you have flowing water in the kitchen as well as in the bathroom. If you want warm water to shower, for example, then you must open the big gas bottle in the back. In this drawer you will find a gas tap. Open the right gas tap. Then all you must do is to turn on the boiler via the onboard display. It works by clicking on this wheel here. Turn it all the way until you reach the thermometer and then click here and then turn the wheel to choose the level. I will choose hot. Now it is blinking, which means that the boiler is heating up. This will take about five minutes and then you will have warm water. Please remember to turn off the water pump and close the gas tap when you no longer need flowing water. This is your bedroom with a super comfortable bed. The bed has a slatted frame, so it will be very comfy. You will also have lots of storage space up here. When you continue your journey, do not forget to close the compartments so that nothing falls out. You also have three windows that you can open and black out as well. Push the lever to the side and then you can tilt open the window. You can close it the same way. Close it here easily and black out the window. If you happen to have this window open, then you can close it with the fly screen. To unfold the rooftop bed, release the flap on the right and left side, and then you will see a switch here. This is the electric lock. Click on it and hold it for about three seconds. Then you will hear a click and the lock is released and now you can push the rooftop bed up. If you are too short and cannot reach it, then you can step onto the seat here. Please take your shoes off so that you can climb to the top. Up here you will have a ladder which I will take down and show you guys how to put it together and use it to climb up. Put the ladder together with these fixtures and then click it into this mount here and make sure that it is standing securely on the ground and then climb to the top. Up here you have a super comfortable double bed and lots of space. The bed even has a slatted frame.
You can also open and close the windows up here. To sleep, black out the windows, and if you want fresh air, then you can open the skylight. The highlight of the roadhouse is the panorama window. Here you have the Velcro to close it. You can release it, and then you will not only have a fresh air, but also a fly screen, so that insects do not come in, and a beautiful panoramic view. Today we see a lake. Closing also goes as quickly as opening it. Attach the Velcro back to the material. You also have up here a reading lamp. Click it to turn on. USB connections to charge your mobile phone on occasion and a 12 volt socket. Both connections work when the vehicle is not connected to external but rather with the board battery. Make sure to turn off the light and fold it back down again before closing the rooftop bed. There is also a guard here so that nobody falls out of the bed. You can attach it easily by attaching these straps. To close the bed again, you will need these straps here if you are not two meters tall. Before you store the ladder again, make sure to release it from the fixture, otherwise you will not be able to reach it again. With it, you will pull the rooftop bed down. First, you will need to put the ladder back on top of the bed before you continue driving again. Then pull the bed down with these two straps down. Pull it down equally on the right and left sides and pull it down a bit until the lock's into place on the right and left side. You will hear it and then the automatic lock will be back in place. If it is not locked correctly, then you will hear a beeping sound when you want to continue driving. If it is beeping, then pull it down a bit more and then it should lock into place. Close the two buckles on both sides and then you can continue your journey. So that the straps do not get in the way, you can fold them together again. For the cold days and nights, you have a parking heater in the vehicle that operates with gas. To turn it on, open the big gas bottle in the back. When it is open, you will find a gas tap in this drawer. You need to open it, and then you can start the parking heater via the board computer. Click once on this wheel, and then the vehicle will blink. We're in the right place to turn it on. Click once, it is currently off, and when we turn the wheel, we can choose how warm it should be in the vehicle. I will choose 20 degrees, and we'll confirm it, and it will take a moment before it turns on. So that the parking heater works and can be turned on, it is important to make sure this window is closed. If the heater is not working, then the window is probably open. There is a sensor here that recognizes when the window is open and then the heater will not turn on because the ventilation for the heater is down here. This should prevent the gas from the heater flowing back into the vehicle. The warm air from the parking heater comes out of these openings here, so make sure that nothing is blocking them, like bigger pieces of luggage, so that the air can circulate inside. To turn the parking heater off again, Click on the button, choose the vehicle, and then turn the wheel all the way to the left and confirm once. Please remember to close the gas tap in the back of the vehicle. And now I will show you the outside connections. Here you have your tanks. Here you will fill up with diesel, and this is the add blue tank. If you need to fill up the ad blue, your board computer will tell you to do so. You will get a message. You can get ad blue at every petrol station and can fill it up here. Here you have the exhaust for the parking heater. 
From the outside, it is not interesting. You cannot do anything, nor do you have to. Here you have the connection to external power. You will receive the cable you need to connect the roadhouse to power at a campsite from Road Surfer. Open this cover up here and put in the cable so that it is locked in place. To release the cable again, click on the black lever here, push it down once, and then you can pull out the power cable. Furthermore, you will see the drain for the water tank here. To empty it, you will find designated areas at a campsite. You can drive on them, and then take this lever here, and put it on here, and pull down. Then the water tank will be open. The water will flow out, and to close it again, pull the lever back into its original position. There is another cover here. Under it, you will find the toilet cassette. To open the cover, you will need the key. Open it, and then press on the switch with both thumbs, and then pull once on the orange. To empty the toilet cassette at the campsite, push the tube to the side. It will open in the front here, and then click with one finger on the button here. Press and hold it, and then you can empty out the cassette. You do not need to use the small wheel, it should stay the way it is. When you have emptied the cassette, then close the tube again here, push it to the side, and then push the cassette back into place. Close the cover, lock it, and that's it. On the side, you will find your fresh water tank here. Make sure to only fill in water in here and not diesel. The diesel tank is on the other side. To open and fill it, you will need the key. Unlock it and turn it to the left and open it. You can fill 100 litres of water in the fresh water tank, which can be filled with a canister or with a garden hose. When it is filled up, just close and lock it up. Now I will show you the boot of the vehicle with lots of storage space. When opening the door, please make sure not to hit your head on the bike rack. It can happen easily if you're not consciously thinking about it. You can see here the big amount of storage there is. You can store your luggage up here, and there is more space down here for additional luggage. Everything you see here you will get from Road Surfer. You have two camping chairs, a camping table, and small drive-on ramps. If you are standing at an angle, they may come in handy. The crank to open the awning, the power cable to connect to external power, a water canister, and a kitchen box are also included. Everything you need for cooking is in here. Everything from plates to cutlery, glasses, mugs, and an espresso can. You will find the gas bottle in the boot, behind this door. This is for cooking and showering. You will also need gas for the parking heater. To open it, turn it to the left and to the right to close it again. If you are not cooking or using the parking heater, make sure that the gas bottle is closed. This should also be the case when you continue driving. Please remember to empty the fresh water tank at the end of your journey and before you bring it back, which you can find down here. You can also fold the mattresses to the side and stack them here. Then you can fold the bed up and it will snap into place on the sides automatically. Under this door, you will find the fresh water tank. To empty it, turn the small wheel to the left and open it all the way. Then the tank will empty itself. If you want to continue driving but want to lose a bit of weight, you can turn the wheel and leave the tank at three quarters fill level. Then the tank will empty all the way to 20 liters. This is what will be left. 
To close the tank again, turn the small wheel back to the right. Now I will show you how you can open your awning. The crank is stored in the boot. If you are a bit shorter than me, then you can also extend it. There is a fixture here to attach the crank, and then you can start twisting. Do not extend it to the very end, just as far so that you can open the legs of the awning. When you reach this point, stop for a moment and open the legs. Click the switch on the side here, and you can take out the legs, push them down, and attach them here. Do the same on the other side. Push the leg down, and then secure it via this fixture. When both legs are extended and attached, then you can continue to open the awning. Please remember to not extend the awning the entire way. The legs need to be in place, or the awning will break and fall off. Now you can continue to open the awning and pull the legs out a tiny bit occasionally. Keep twisting the crank and now the awning is extended. Now that the awning is completely extended and we can make ourselves comfortable, there is a table and two chairs that you can unpack as well. You can find them in the boot. I will get them now. The chairs are very comfy and very practical. There is a bag here on the side where you can store something and a spot to hold your drink here. <laughs>